Hello and welcome to this installation of a connected version 2. Now I purchased this connected from Smart Home Alarms UK. I found them to be very helpful. I sent details on my panel before I bought it and said would this be a suitable upgrade and they were like yep. So here I am ready to install it so you can see um, the process I have to go through to get it working. So let's get on with it. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to remove power from your alarm because there is a uh, mains voltage inside of this now when you do that you should still see some lights typically because there should be a battery back up in here so i've actually already disconnected the mains on here put the battery in for the sake of showing you this i've disconnected the uh um, sounder as well because the way this alarm had turned out to be it was kicking off the uh, sounder when i didn't want it to now when you take the power off you should see some difference here normally it'd be, i mean it'll depend on your particular model but you'd, you'd expect a solid light and here it's flashing so it's, it's saying yeah i've got power but i'm on the battery so what you need to be sure is it's on the battery so turn each fuse off if you're unsure just turn your entire fuse box off and then um, you can progress right i'm going to grab a screwdriver so in this case it's just a phillips screwdriver and take these out um, what I've done in this case is I've already uh, removed the uh, live wire from here and I've actually removed it entirely out of the wall so what you want to do is you want to trace back your wires what will normally happen wherever this wall where it's been installed there would have drilled behind and hopefully you can find your wires behind there so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the battery power off as well so that this thing has no juice at all there we go so there we are that, that, that's the bare panel now i've already disconnected a few things here just because mine was misbehaving so what you had coming through here was um that's the actual going out to the the uh sounder outs actually that's the sounder outside so this one's the sound i'll pop some black tape around it once i traced the wires back and i, I tugged them from the back so i knew which was which so that's the um sound uh, this was the keypad and um, because you're going to a smart alarm you don't need a keypad at all so you can just disconnect that you take it off you won't get rid of it these uh, two last wires that are connected are the pirs so what you typically get is you get a uh, you get power cables with a uh, like red being the plus black the minus and then you get like these data cables which actually trigger the sense of whether it's on or off which tend to be like blue and yellow that might vary from uh uh, from different brands of sensors but uh, certainly in my case that's the colouring that they've gone with so I'm going to take the panel off here so really what you're doing with the connected is you're getting rid of this and uh, replacing it with a connected board so you're just getting rid of this large board placing it with a smaller one um, it's got its own sounder here but I'm probably I don't know if I'm actually going to bother reusing that so I'm going to slide it out for now if I can Yeah, so it's out of the way. Left it, excuse me, I've got a squeaky floor. That's small than that. Other, obviously, anti burglar devices, a squeaky floor. You don't need an alarm when you get one of them. Um, this is the 12 volt that comes with it. I've already pushed it through already. Um, what I did do actually with that, because you've got your existing wires coming through, you don't want to drill through a hole that's already got wires in because you're going to damage them. So I just drilled a new hole. Uh, hopefully, with your box as well, you'll have you know more than one point where you can. Uh, drill through to connect so that's what I've done there so all I'm going to do now is get a flathead screwdriver and we can then take off the PIRs and so on um, what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to remove that power supply because we don't need it so it's just unnecessary uh, part of the alarm that's in there Obviously, you don't have to use your existing um, case as we're doing here for the panel. You could put this in, you know, in, in any kind of plastic box. You know, you could put it in your loft or whatever. But obviously, you've got the problem of rerouting wires. So, for the sake of this demonstration, we'll just put it in place. Although I am tempting myself later on to just relocate this somewhere totally out of sight because there's no need. For it to be visible once it's a smart device, it can be anywhere in your house. So there we go, board completely disconnected.
So I think this just slides off actually. Come on, think, yep, there we go. Now, what they do with the um, connected is they provide um, adhesive feet. So we can put these onto the casing to hold the connected in place. So I'm basically I'm just going to do this out of the shop because it's easier for me while I'm doing it. So you'll just have to bear with me while I, basically I'm just going to push each one of these through like that. So if it'd be right if I see if you had a dedicated cameraman here doing it for me, but I've just got this. In fact, it's my mobile phone on a tripod for the sake of this video today. So I'm between cameras. Right, so there we go. And those pads ready you just take the uh protect off the back there and then it's adhesive so before we do that we'll have a thing you know could go down here could go up here i'm more inclined to have it up top because the other one was uh up top i just have to think about whether i can clear the wires out of the way but that looks probably around there to me looks reasonably reasonably sensible can i get it a bit higher maybe yeah maybe there that's Got the most clearance getting wires in. Right, I've uh, managed to uh, get the wiring prepared for us to continue on with the uh, tutorial for this installation. Uh, what I've actually done is just print out a little label so I know what I'm dealing with. So we've got the siren and the two PIRs, and as we mentioned, keypad we're not going to use. Now I went back to one of the PIRs to have a look just to be sure that the of the wiring convention that's being used here, because there isn't a sort of universal. This is what our colour does. Uh, for an alarm so it can be down to the individual installer for which colors they pick uh, but we've got the um the, the voltage um that powers the devices um the plus being the red black being the minus you've got then got these additional pair of cables which are used for uh, triggering the device like the pir and i noticed on this um that the yellow was the ground uh and that the blue would have been um what's what actually triggers um you know that kind of the, the positive uh trigger on on that device so basically that pair together does the triggering when you walk past the pir um so we're going to take that approach we've got um two terminal blocks this first one is what powers the sounder and all the devices we've then got um zone one and then a ground zone two which shares the same ground we've then got three ground four and you obviously share the same ground five for the ground and then six which uh, shares that ground so that's how you get your um six devices put onto this you can connect these devices i, th I think you use the, this terminal to connect more than one of these together so if you want to do 12 zones or more um but here we're just dealing with the six so let's get on with the wiring now just before i do that i want to talk about the siren on the siren is the one that's going to give you a headache here in the uk uh, in the us they just tend to have the um positive and minus so it's just two wires over here you can have four or six this one's got four so i think the idea was it was doing a siren and a strobe now for whatever reason the strobe won't work for me it could be i'm doing something wrong here with the wiring but um it could be that we've had a lot of storms and then the alarm box uh, box was getting just uh, full with water so i don't know whether that's actually uh, damaged the strobe but either way it, it won't seem to strobe for me but the the bell works that's all i need because i've got smart lighting so um, I can strobe with that and I can do it all around the house and so on. So it'll be more prominent than a, than a strobe anyway. So that's not a worry for me, but just keep that in mind. Um, your best bet would be if you can get up to your box and ladder, see how it's wired up. If you can't, um, just try a bit of trial and error. You'll soon find out which is uh, when you actually trigger um, the siren, whether it's working or not. I'll talk a bit about that as we uh, wire it up. But we're going to continue, uh, continue on by starting with the uh, PIRs. So... Um, I've got a uh, front PIR, PIR here, so um, that's this wire. So that's like that's my basically my zone. I'm going to call my zone one. Uh, in a in a conventional alarm, you could actually put I believe these PIRs together, so you get two PIRs together as one zone. But we don't really want to do that with the smart alarm because you want the um, granularity of knowing which device is being triggered because you can do much more than it just being an alarm. So what I'm going to do with this um, front um, PIR. It's not only going to be able to trigger my alarm, but it's going to be used now as part of my smart home that it will trigger a light so that when you're walking past the uh, front PIR, it's actually going to turn on one of my uh, smart lights. So it just makes life a lot simpler then. Don't have to bother about having a light switch, so that's 
extremely lazy and fantastic. So yeah, we're putting in the grounds. Let's make sure it gets right. These are a little bit fiddly sometimes. You, you think you've got them in and then you tug it and it comes away. So do always uh, check them in right. So this is zone two, which is going to be uh, my side PIR. Put that in again if I wanted to. Once this is done, I could make it trigger other devices. Obviously, with these as well, you can you can get like a little buzzer in here so that it buzzes as somebody walks past them. So you've got like a little notification as well. Um, so there we go. So that's essentially the wiring done the zones. We then want to put in the uh, negatives and positives. Um, so we've got the auxiliary here, the negatives on that and putting these in i put a blue from the uh from the siren in there as well because i think with the combination i've been trying i think that's the right place for this i'm 100 percent but basically it works as i want it to work with it here so that's what we're doing then we've got our positives and the red ones that's all nice and straightforward i'm going to put that straight into the middle one Yep, hold on a minute. Is that in? Just double checking there if that's in. It just feels a little bit loose this one. I'm going to redo this one. Like I said, they were a little bit fiddly. I don't want to leave anything loose so that it can come away. I think, yeah. I like to wire these wires round each other and then push them in. I think someone there just wasn't quite on. So yeah, don't, don't be afraid to just double check you wear and pull it out, put it back in right. Yep, there we go. And then finally, this is the alarm. Um, now with this one, I mean, to be honest, it'll work with just the, the black anyway, but I'm putting in uh, the black and the yellow. I was hoping with this to get, as I said, to get the strobe going, but it doesn't seem to work. But as long as I can get the bell, I am a happy man. What you will generally want to do is you want to use an uninterruptible power supply. So you've got this, so you can just press on the light and it's ready to go. You can then put in your uh, 12 volt power, squeeze it into your box, however it fits best for you. And then you put this into the connected. So that way, even if the mains power is disconnected, this will continue to power the alarm for the un uninterruptible power supply. Now. Just a quick chat on the connected itself. I don't really want to go fully into the software here, but I'll just give you a, just a, a quick um, rundown. The connected creates its own Wi-Fi hotspot. So you can connect to that uh, with a browser, uh, ideally on your mobile phone, so your Android or your Apple device. You then provide it with your network SSID, uh, so basically the name of your um, Wi-Fi network and your password. Um, the device will then reboot, connect onto your Wi-Fi, and then you can use the connected app, which again, you can get for Android and Apple. Um, that allows you to firmware flash a device. That's really straightforward. So um, there's no headaches doing a firmware flash, and it's quite quick as well. Um, you can then configure the setup so you can tell it uh, what kind of devices you've got on each zone. Um, and then there's the connected cloud, which is quite a recent addition. I think it's um, still in beta. Now, in the US, that speaks direct to Samsung SmartThings, so you can integrate it with those devices, which is really handy. In the UK, as I, at the point of doing this installation, it's not available, but it's apparently due in a few weeks' time. Um, the bonus with this is it won't need the uh, Samsung SmartThings hub, so that saves you, I think uh, that's over £50 you're saving in not having to buy it um, if you just want to use a connected I use uh, open source software and I have a rule set up so that um, if you walk past a PIR and it's after sunset, um, it will then turn on the appropriate light, that kind of thing. So it gives you more flexibility than it just being an alarm. Um, I may well go over that uh, in more detail uh, in a later tutorial once the additional functionality that I will want is available in the UK. So I hope you found uh, this useful. Cheers.